Welcome to the UK Data Service. This video will help you to use the Secure Lab environment efficiently, saving time for you and for the support team. Today we're going to look at the project area folder structure, submitting outputs and what you must include, and what to do if you're asked to make changes. Let's look at the folders. The original data folder contains the data sets that you've been granted access to. It's a read-only folder, so that you can't overwrite the clean data by mistake. You should copy the data files from the original data folder into the working folder to begin your analysis. Many researchers will link two or more data sets together in SecureLab. If this applies to you, then please remove anything that you don't actually need for your analysis, such as duplicate variables. It's very rare that we have issues with space or memory on our servers, but if you create a really huge data set, it may slow down the system for you and for other users. To keep your project area tidy and manageable, there is a designated folder for you to store your syntax files. The uploads folder is where we'll put anything that you ask us to import into your project area once it has been virus checked and content checked. If you're submitting syntax or material written outside SecureLab, such as a methodology section or other explanatory material, it must not contain data. If you do want to import files into your project area, you'll need to complete an import request form. This can be found on the UK Data Service website here. If you want to import data, then permissions may have to be sought, unless this has already been covered in your initial research proposal. The SDC folder is where you must place any outputs you wish to have released to you. Outputs must be placed in the SDC folder in a subfolder with the correct naming convention. As you can see, the folder name contains the project number, year, month and day of the month in a particular format. This is really important. If your project is long running, this folder may become cluttered and potentially confusing. If it's not 100% clear which output you want us to check, we'll have to contact you for clarification. This will delay the release of your output. We have finite resources and cannot waste time checking erroneous outputs. Please give your file a meaningful name, not something generic like output release. Please refer to this file name when you fill in the output request form so that everything is really clear. When you wish to make an output request, you must use the form on the website. Then you must fill in your details. And finally, there is a tick box list, which is a reminder of the minimum output criteria. This is really important. Please only tick these boxes if you have genuinely complied with each statement. This will save wasting our time and yours. As you know, we aim to respond to you about your output within five working days. Imagine it's a busy period and we cannot check your output until four or five days after submission. We then open your output and find that, despite you having ticked all the boxes, you have very obviously not satisfied some of the minimum requirements set out here. We will then terminate the checking process and ask you to make the necessary changes. When these changes have been made and you have let us know that this has been done, your output will re-enter the queue at the back and the five working days response time is reset to zero. The checklist is here to help you make a final check as to whether you have satisfied all of the minimum requirements. Please use it as a final check to ensure that you have met all of the minimum criteria. We have minimum requirements for outputs because the clearer your output is, the easier and quicker it is to check. Our requirements were around expediency, resource management, safety and security. If you get this right first time, you are much more likely to receive your output quickly, which is better for everyone. In some cases, there is something very obviously disclosive that has been missed by the researcher. At other times, outputs are missing pieces of information that would enable us to make an informed decision about their safety. In either case, we'll contact you to ask you to make changes or supply more information. Please do not send any clarifying information, for example, underlying ends, via email. This is essentially removing something from the secure lab environment, thus bypassing the security model. This is a breach. 
As we say repeatedly on the training course, you must not write anything down from the screen. Please don't be afraid to ask the support team if you're not sure about something. The more care you take to submit an output that satisfies the minimum criteria, the sooner you'll get your output returned to you. Further details on output requirements, import requests and much more can be found in the Secure Lab user guide. This is in the references folder in your project area. The best way of contacting us is via the online forms we looked at earlier. Just use the drop down box to select the reason for contacting us. For example, is it a data query, an output request or something else? This approach means that your message will go directly to the right people. We hope this video has been useful. Please let us know if you have any questions.